they are of equal footing no? when they're inside the class. So the, the, the moment the students go inside your class, so they have to feel that they are equal, that, no, that the teacher does not favor anyone uh, from them so that they will be interested and that they feel that they are included in the discussion, included in, as student in the class. No? So, ensure, uh, so equity actually ensures students from all cultural backgrounds uh, to have equal opportunities uh, to succeed. No? It addresses issues of cultural biases and discrimination. So here's a photo of uh, the organization with the local policemen, police person, police officers, not politically correct. <laughs> Uh, community and family involvement. So uh, the lady uh, police there is my sister. Uh, so community and family involvement. This approach often involves the active participation of students' families and the local community support and reinforce the child learning. In, uh, in our administrative meeting two weeks ago, um, uh, one of the offices uh, in Calabang campus proposes to have like family day uh, for the campus. This is uh, actually to honor uh, also members of the family so that, you know, we're one uh, family in the campus in the university. university so we wanted uh, to have like a family day so people would be more, um, uh, in a way, uh, welcome. They will be welcome. They, they will feel welcome in when they are in campus, like our parents, you know, uh, siblings, although not uh, studying in CBSU or Calabanga, would feel that they also belong in the campus. So that that kind of feel we wanted you know, to express uh, during that day. Again, uh, the involvement of family and the community in the instruction is very much important so students feel that instruction should be should not be different from the way uh, they learn also from the community especially that we say that we do not only learn inside the classroom even when you just walk there uh, outside the street you're actually learning okay. cultural competency teachers are encouraged to develop cultural competences competency which includes knowledge, skills, and attitudes needed to effectively teach in culturally diverse classrooms. So it's important. This is my uh, let reviewers last August. They just took their let uh, last September and we're waiting for the results, of course. Yeah, uh, so students should be very much prepared no, and, be, and be competent in uh, so when they, when they when they teach their own classroom, they are very much prepared, especially when there are varied, varied uh, uh, students uh, from varied culture. We're also trying to prepare the campus uh, for a possible foreign student. So we wanted that the campus be prepared in, in, by uh, promoting simple principles of internationalization, given that I am also the international re relation officer of the campus. I would always tell them that we have to start with time. Now we have to remove, uh, forget Filipino time, instead uh, be conscious of time, because foreign, uh, foreign people, people from the outside the Philippines would be strict in terms of them and they say we'll only be meeting for two, uh, one hour they would say we'll only be meeting for one hour really you know when you uh you know, exceed even with five minutes they will uh, we really tell you that uh, hello we're actually extending uh we just we agreed that we're only meeting one hour and then other than time we have to also improve in terms of our uh, infrastructure you know? so uh, there should be an international appeal and in terms of structure we have it has to be a uh, safe zone and gender sensitive and they're culturally sensitive and then a lot of sensitive gun sensitive and then but more uh, sen sensitive in terms of culture in, the, in terms of religion in terms of I'm so happy that uh, we started immediately without any uh, 
added routines. Now, sometimes kasi yung mga Filipino organized events like webinars, they would start with a lot of preliminaries before the start of the of the official start of the webinar, which would not be the case. Now, we have to be much direct in terms of organizing certain certain events. So, I like the way you organize the, this particular event. Interdisciplinary approach. So, here's uh, Ma'am Lilith and uh, the director of the Indigenous of the University uh, with me in when we when we visited. Uh, uh, this is uh, CMTN, Cross Mountain College. Interdisciplinary approach. Culture-based instruction often takes an interdisciplinary approach, incorporating cultural elements into various subjects, not social studies alone or history. So you can actually implement culture-based instruction even when you are like a math teacher or a science teacher or any other teacher, okay? Because as, as we uh, learned early on, you don't have to be culture teacher or or a literature teacher or a history teacher you know to integrate uh, local knowledge into into your instruction another uh, great incident i gotten from the from the training we had uh, in cross mountain college is when i asked them how do they integrate uh, indigenous knowledge into their uh, instruction where the college is very much science-based. Um, the director told me that we don't have to contrast uh, local knowledge or indigenous knowledge uh, to scientific knowledge because they actually complement. Uh, the absence of one is actually the addition of the other. So I, I like the kind of uh, thinking people from the West is actually, you know, exhibiting. And we do not, we don't have to uh, distance ourselves from the way they think. You know, sometimes I say we tend to be uh, also, you know, only love anything that is ours, diba? It's the It's the opposite of uh, loving, loving everything about the West. Uh, we have to be balanced in a way. Yeah, we, we have to also acknowledge our culture and integrate that to our instruction, but not also forgetting things that we can actually also learn from outside our own culture. So so these things, you know, these things should actually complement. So, again, here. Uh, but what is the challenge? But what is the challenge for us? You know, beginning very young uh, teachers in uh, uh, in different schools and campuses and universities. The challenge to go out from the box. When I say going out from the box, I would mean that, let's say for example, I'm very much against all uh, culture teachers or anthropology teachers or uh, or social science teachers or history teachers that would that would uh, wear uh, yung ano mga ethnic dresses and uh, yung mga uh, ano pa uh, uh, may ano pa sablay pa just to feel just to show that they are actually teaching culture you don't have to you know have costume inside your classroom so you you prove that you are actually integrating culture into your instruction. What I'm trying to say is that I'm not against them, but I'm also saying that you can be anything also as a teacher. You can be very unique as a as a teacher, but also integrating culture into your classroom, right? Parang ayoko naman kasi na stereotype yung mga teacher that are actually you know pushing pushing uh pushing culture-based instruction into the, into the academy. Another way, another uh, another thing that we have to decolonize, I call it decolonization project, is you know how the outside culture see Bicol. Because we're actually stereotyped as uh, when they hear Bicol, they would only 
uh, say of Sarumbangi, of Magayon, of Mayon, of Oragon, uh, basta Bicol, Oragon yan. So, Sili, Abaca, and Ina. No? So, but, you know, you have to see the other parts of Bicol. You have to see the other culture, treasure, cultural treasure of Bicol. We're not saying that Ina is not uh, important. Of course, we respect her, we even venerate her. We do not say that we should stop, you know, um, appreciating Mayon. No, no, we're not saying that. We're only saying that there are still other things that are equally beautiful, that are equally important, uh, artifacts, cultural uh, uh, uh cultural treasure of our region. No? That lesser known cultural artifact should also be popularized, should be streamlined. So how's the state of cultural landscape? So here's the showcase of a lot of things that are going on in the region uh, in terms of arts, culture, language, and literature. So. Just recently, so Bicol culture is very much vibrant, it's very much alive. So just recently, last September, we had the Rigmat. It's a, actually a multi-cultural and multi-sectoral uh, uh, festival of the different arts in Bicol. So you have their food, the celebration of food, celebration of books, celebration of uh, movies, music. And lahat na siguro nandoon sa Rigmat Art and Culture Festival. I know, it's it's last August, not September. So we have Ring Rangas. So Book Talk. No? So we had Merlin the Bob Bobby, who's so actually um, Australia based. Uh, are you still there? Uh, we also have Mary Ann Mall. Hello? Are you still there? Hello? Yes, yes, po. <laughs> I thought I'm alone in my room. I'm stressed. Okay, I'm, I'm back. Um, and then we also ha had Jay Salvosa, a teacher from Ateneo de Naga University. So they've talked about their um, books, no? Uh, so and different um, literary uh, topics. Then uh, we had Dr. Reniera Barbasa, my professor from UP De La Man, who talked about Ring Talk and also the books. Uh, among the books, of course, my novel, journal entries. If you have like extra money, you can buy. It's available at Savage My at the Naldonaga University Press. Uh, other books during uh, that day, uh, we have the Maps of Kamarinasur, isang dekadang, dekadang resti. And pag uh, pagmang no uh, by good Santos okay. and other books Borabod. so yeah so we also have a uh, conversation with authors these are Alan Popa and Eman uh, Barameda is from the island of Catanduanes uh, and Nap is also from Catanduanes is actually a principal dep at principal we have uh, Jim Paul Borlagdan from Tobacco Albay very good one of the best poet in Bicol okay, there. So we have Rabas. I, I I like the I like the idea of like making use of a particular collection of short stories as a map, literary map. No, so lahat ng mga lahat ng mga setting sa setting sa Nagenio by Carlos Arius, a professor from UP Dalaman. Lahat ng setting ng kanyang short story uh, compiled in Nagenios is set in Naga. And so what the a uh, writer Vic Neva did was to design a, a, a design a literary tour. Uh, so the participants uh, go into a tour, walking tour, making use of Nagenyo as their mapa. No, so ang ganda, ganda na idea. So a part an excerpt of stories uh, where they are the those who are participants of the literary tour. They would read an excerpt from a particular story. 
where the so- story is actually set. So they went uh, to the minor seminary, they went to Ateneda Naga, they went to Quince Martyrs, and and read no the excerpt from Nagenio uh, about, like, say, for example, when they are in Quince Martyrs, they would read no excerpt in the story that is set in Quince Martyrs. And it's poetic, lovely. I also did this one for Calabanga. So I've collected... Um, short stories and poems of local writers of Calabanga and would bring participants to those places like San Miguel Bay, Saba. And then we we read uh, poems about Saba. And then we go to Hinulid and they re- and then we read an excerpt of a short story that uh, that is uh, connected to Hinulid. Right? So something like that. So you can also do this one. It's cultural, but it's also literary cultural tour slash literary tour. We also have here Russo, and this is an exhibit of art, art and paintings. It's uh, held, it, it uh, was held in Museo de uh, Jesse Robredo. We, uh, we have uh, Rambong Art Gallery, Art Fair, Workshops of the Artist. We had Rang, rang. ito naman sa food, yeah. so Namit Kanaga. We got Sinag, yeah, it's a uh, University of Santa Isabel, yung opening nila. And then we have Rollo, mga movies naman na uh, Bicol nun. No? Belicola as in Bicol. So there were talks, there were screenings and performances. So, another other than Rigmat, we also had the Philippine Book uh, Festival in the uh, Manila uh, it's a, a trade, trade center in, in Pasay. Uh, it's how do you call that trade center? Yeah, even uh, it's in Manila in Pasay. So the Philippine Book Festival, we launch books there. Uh, Father Wilmer Tria is there. Christine Bilen Ang, uh, a professor from Ateneo de Manila, uh, who's uh, 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 a writer of children's book. Uh, we have John Sherwin. Uh, uh, Acampado, uh, illustrator, no, artist, Eman Barameda. Uh, he's known as short story writer and essayist too. We have Marni Kelatis, uh, very much uh, a very good uh, poet and uh, a translator of Free Alma, the National Artist for Literature. So we also had the Bicol Book Festival. This is the local version of the Philippine Book Festival. But one thing good, uh, but one good thing about this Bicol Festival is that it's a pilgrimage of books. So we roam from one one town to the next and try to you know sell books, but at the same time conduct conferences, talks, and conversation with writers and meeting local artists and cultural uh, workers. So it's organized by. Uh, no less than uh, Christian Cordero and his Savage Man bookshop. So here's some of the uh, photos, pardon my you know, <laughs> editing skill, not so good. And then here's uh, another good thing about this Beacon Book Festival is that we honor uh, writers who, who already passed, who are already uh, already who died already sorry who died already so we had we honored like for, exa- for example for the first Bicol Book Fair we honored uh, Maria Lilia Real Witt no? so the the author of Bic- the uh, the Bicol of the Bicols of the Philippines right so ang ganda ganda nun. and then we also ha- we also honored in the first uh, year of Bicol Festival Benvenido uh, Santos, uh, the adopted son of of Bicol, was once uh, dean uh, uh, of the Nueva Cáceres University of Nueva Cáceres. So we have Angela Manalang Gloria, uh, whose mansion is still intact in Tabaco. No, uh, one of the pioneering uh, poet, uh, sabi da ahead of her own generation. So she was. Uh, she was very much feminist when people the Philippines uh, very much um, very much uh, 
ano tawag natin ng macho no culture we still have macho culture during that time but uh Angela Maria Gloria talks about feminism already in her beautiful poems so we have Delphine Fresnosa uh a short story writer from Sorso God we uh we went to ang ibig sabihin we uh, to honor them we went to their ano to their resting place so we went to Sorsogon and tried to offer flowers to the re, to uh to the set uh, to the to their resting place so we went to Sorsogon and you know uh honor these people uh we also uh went to Baao and honor Luis Dato okay uh, also a very good poet uh ahead of his generation and uh we also honor Socorro Federisti an English teacher of Ateneo de Naga is very good English uh, short story writer. Okay, here's uh, the design of the second Bicol Book Festival. Just this year, we went even as far as Tikao Masbate uh, this year. So uh, here's the uh, writers that we honor this year. Of course, I've, I have to in include um uh Jaime Malanyaon no so uh, Bicol historian Calab uh, who's from Calabanga uh we have Teotimo Basis he's a priest no from Albay uh Gualberto Manlangit from Partido no once uh, um, a mayor no and then we also uh honor Justino Noida and Sally Imperial Sally Imperial, I think, is source of God. And then Jesse uh, Badilio from Tikao Masbate. Po a po very good poet. And I think a doctor, a medical doctor. A medical doctor who writes. Very nice. Science plus art. Science plus uh, aesthetics. Here's a uh, planning stage. So we have their uh, uh, Dr. Uy and Christian Cordero. So here's a uh, pauwi na kami from Tikao. So you have their, this one is Albert Beta, and we have Ryan Quatrona from Bubi. Yeah, and Christian Cordero. Okay, here's the team organizing the Bicol Book Festival. So, Busi. Um, I've asked the organizer to run Busi slideshow. I'll stop first my uh, sharing for a while so we can run the slide. So, I hope it will run. Can we do it now? Yes po, sir. Presenting na po. Thanks.
All right, thank you. That was the parade of uh, uh, books. Uh, can we stop uh, the slide, Mom Jessel? Thank you for the help. All right, so, and then I'll go, go back to my discussion. So see how uh, how plenty the Bicol Nun books are. Uh, Libro de Bicolia, Bicoliana. Yeah. And dami dami, no? So we also hope that uh, this will uh, add, uh, we will add more to the list. No? And we also are waiting for uh, uh, four uh, books from Sipohot. Yeah. So Savage Mind, my, ano, my program sila, book from each of the town. Meron na yung tabako, meron na yung the rock, the ba? Meron na yung uh, meron na I think yung legaspere na ilo launch. Meron na ring iriga and naga. So parang someone has to write uh, parang local history, uh, local essays from Sipoma, narratives from Sipoma. Again, so that's the challenge. All right. So let me share again. We're done with Luciana. Right. So, ngayon, uh, I, I'm happy that uh, last weekend you had your um, webinar on Bicol Wiki. Teka lang. Narinig po ba ako? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, po, sir. Thank you. Ayan. So, Bicol Wiki, ano? So, ayan. Uh, I'll introduce you. Uh, we go back to parang ano, recall lang of uh, discussion. Para wala magpi-picture lang si Paul ito kasi ayan. Ayan. So um sinasabi nila that the that the uh, reawakening of Bicol literature and Bicol Bicol writing is when they conducted yung pagsurat Bicol noon in 20 in 2000, in 2000, ano yung pagsurat Bicol? This is not even an organization. So, uh, Wiki had uh, recorded uh, this particular important event. No? Ang pagsurat Bicol noon, o pagsurat Bicol, uh, sa long tripon, as in, pururun din mga paratukdo, as in, para surat sa rehiyong Bicol, na pinuunan kang 20, uh, kang 2000. In yung inapod ming, ano, uh, Bicol Olympics kang mga parasurat Bicol noon. No? Para kang mga parasurat sa Bicol. No? So, Olympics mi, na, na hold siya every after four years. So, nagpuon siya kang 2000 sa Iriga. Ay, so, na Iriga, Siudad Ning Ligaspi. No? Ginibo ini, ginigibo ini lambang apat na taon maliban sa ikalimang edisyon which I organized kang 2017 kasi nagbagyo. Kung natatandaan ni Duhan, 2017, 16 ata nagbagyo. So, na-hold me siya January na of 2017. Pwede kang 2012, inapod ang pagsurat Bicol noon bilang pagsurat Bicol. Shorten siya. Ano? Uh, kinukonsider ang konperyensya sa mga universidad as in kolehiyo sa Albay. We have Camarines Sur and Camarines Norte. So, last uh, pagsurat Bicol was held online because of pandemic in 2020 sa Camarines Norte. Sa April or May, uh, maduruman ang gabos na writer sa Isla Catanduanes para sa 2024 uh, pagsurat Bicol. So, we're actually very much in, uh, excited about this. I've already uh, met with my local group 
director's project, I, I've told them that uh, we will be, uh, my, uh, my co-advisor co and I will be uh, giving away two scholarships. <laughs> ang ibig sabihin, lilibro mi ang duwang membro. Di dapat mag sila para de they will be selected as among the two scholar for Pagsuras Biko in 2024. Yun. So sa Katanduanes at sa next year, um, para Pagsurat Biko. Ano? So dyan daan nagpuon so pag-boom kang, kang mga libro. If, you know, if you've noticed from 2023, pasaro-saro lang yung ano, di ba? Pasaro-saro lang yung publication pa, pa sa 2023. 2003, karo saro o duwa lang, and then 2024, saro o duwa, hanggang mahiling nindo sa year. Kada kulo na ng publication. So, there was a rebirth of Bicol Literature. Okay? And then, ma mahalaga rin sa Bihon si mga organization that are local here, Bicol writers, like Kabulig Bicol. Yeah. Ano ba ang Kabulig Bicol? So, yan. Ang Kabulig Bicol, sarong kasaroan yung panliteratura pa, ng mga parasurat, as in mga tataramon ng Bicol. Yan. So, uh, members of that is Frank Peñones, si Dul Santos, si uh, Isa Redburn, si Esting Haku, who's now the president of uh, Kabulig Bicol. Uh, so, dati ka member, so, uh, iba pang mga para sorat ano so ngunyan ang uh, igwapang sarupang uh, organization ang para sorat bicol noon no? so sa uh, I, oh, I'm, I'm also a member of this organization ini ang nag-organize kang saring sing national writers workshop uh, makol ma kami for the 11th saring sing national workshop this coming december so it's a uh, Three, uh, two to three days uh, writer's workshop. Ngayon niya, nataon, gigibuhon ang Saringsing National Writer's Workshop sa farm ni uh, Dr. Danny Herona. He's the Bicol historian who's a professor from Partido State University. Ang parasulat Bicol noon, sarong kasaroan yung mga parasulat, uh, parasulat from Bicol, Bicolano, sa Bicol, sa Rion, uh, na nagtutulod kang tataramon, literatura, literatura at sinkultura ang Bicol noon. Itunugdas kang 2010. Ang mga miyembro igdi, sinda yours truly, Buboy Agway, si uh, uh, Ayan Idea, Sir Irvin Santo Tomas, so speaker nito last Saturday, si Marvin Aquino from Sibiswapili, si Ian Orasa, architect from uh, Biscas, Si Edwin Breva from Sibiswa, Kalabanga. Si Sabina Marites Laniada from Pasakao, Deaf Ed Teacher. Yan. And many more. <laughs> or around 20, 15 to 20, 20 members. Uh, kung hihilingunin do ang activities mi talaga is usually on the workshop and mga literary contest. Ano? Uh, mahalaga rin sabihin yung mga... Uh, yung projects ko sa Sibiswa Kalabanga, we organize our extension project like the San Miguel Bay San Miguel Bay Writers Workshop. Some of uh, your students before now, a colleague uh, was a fellow of San Miguel Bay Writers Workshop. We are selecting around 15 to 20 fellows per uh, workshop and we try to you know help uh, our fellows revise their manuscripts so in in the hope that uh, their works will be published in no time so, um, san miguel bay writers workshop uh, this is uh, courtesy of uh, bicol wikipedia no um, san miguel bay writers workshop dating bay area writers workshop Ang ina talagang taon ka ni ang apod mi, Bay Area Writers Workshop. Pero when I search the net, igwa palang Bay Area from sa US, so gano'n San Francisco. So gusto ko unique, dahil na lang na Bay Area. Ah, uh, Bay Area referring to like Kanaman, Magaraw, Bombon, Kalabanga. ba Bombon, Kalabanga, Tinambak. So that's the Bay Area and Seruma. Pero mas, uh, mas inclusive na ang San Miguel Bay kasi uh, pati yung Mercedes sa 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 Cam Norte and Daet 
uh, belong to the area, San Miguel Bay area. So, uh, in, in our second year, we call the workshop as San Miguel Bay Writers Workshop. Now, it, uh, now for this year, it's in its fifth year. And the Cebuswa Writers Workshop is now on its ninth year. Yung, anong difference ng uh, San Miguel Bay Writers Workshop from Cebuswa Writers Workshop? Yung Cebuswa Writers Workshop kasi limited to students from Kalamang Campus. But with San Miguel Bay Writers Workshop, this is more inclusive. Even the writers from neighboring towns, uh, even community writers may join this particular workshop. Yeah. Uh, also, of course, Haring Sing is organized by Parasurat because no, no? Uh, and some more. Uh, ang dami pa actually. Lahat ko naman na mention yung nandito, di ba? So, balik tayo sa slide ni Hipolito. So we're done with that. Yeah. So we go now to the pedagogy pack. I'm stressed with uh with the webinar because my cha my the challenge for me is really to introduce you with the content of culture based instruction. So uh we actually traveled from visual to the written word to workshop to the training. So we you know uh try to train new breed of writers, new breed of artists to come up with. Uh, very good artwork and uh, very good writing. So th those are the content uh, of of this particular webinar. But 50% uh, also of the webinar is is on the pedagogy, right? So paano ang gagawin doon sa content na yun, that we have a vibrant Bicol culture, we have a vibrant Bicol literature and arts in the region. We're very much we, we're very much lucky to have vibrant culture uh, in this part of the country. But the problem now for the for the next part of the webinar is how to make use of this vibrant culture uh, to you know complement our instruction inside our classroom. So that's the question now of pedagogy, you know. And so, uh, mag travel naman kita making use of books. Eh? Masabi naman kamo si Polito, very bookish. But uh, well, we always have to respect things that are. Things that are written down before us. Bago tayo mag-introduce of our own. Pagmano uh, din tayo. So, mga nauna sa atin, right? So, I think the, the... Kung oldest talaga, you have to read Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Pero, pero yung Pedagogy of the Oppressed naman lang is uh, para a response to the negative effect of banking method, di ba? So, yung banking method kasi sinasabi that ginagawa lang mga objective of learning yung students. So, yung pedagogy of the oppressed make use of students not as mere object of learning but more of subject of learning. Diba? Nagtuturo tayo hindi para maging i-control, eh, maging robot ang mga asosyante but so the, the students may learn. So, uh, in, a, in a pedagogy of the oppressed, in an instruction that is highly influenced by pedagogy of the oppressed, students should be active learners. Yun lang naman yun eh. So that's when you look, uh, when you're looking for the oldest, really, you know, uh, material that I make use is it's really the pedagogy of the oppressed, and ultimately, ultimately, it's the making lit a hit uh, published by Ateneo Manila. Uh, it's also uh, based on the pedag on pedagogy of the oppressed. Yung kanila naman, I'm making use of a lot of activity this these are uh, this particular method yung sa atin naman nila make use of activities activity driven instruction so more on activity to 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 teach literature pero etong uh, webinar natin today would start with the pens manual for uh, teaching philippine literature right so this is published by the philippine center for International Pen. It's the International Organization of Writers. Okay. So edited by Ronald uh, Baitan. Ano yung ano manual nila? Paano siya inorganize? Yung manual for te teaching Philippine literature follows Kilgore method of the La Salle University. So so the La Salle University in Manila make use of Kilgore plan no uh, in all their literature subjects so ano yung parts of kilgore method uh, so you have there you start with your instruction with objective 
and then the rational rational being the a statement um, highlighting the importance of the topic and why why is it important to learn and also what are the you know notes that are needed by by learners to learn better the topic or the literary piece or cultural uh treasure or significant uh significant cultural item so third is the uh, they uh, uh, they have part of the part of the plan is a key concept for understanding it's a short para paragraph explaining concept that the student should know prior to the discussion and number four yung pinaka plan niya uh tabularize ito ang first column is the activity ano yung activity and then the objectives of the activity and then the expected behavior of the student what will the student do and then plan uh, teachers uh, behavior ano yung mga gagawin nila ng teachers and the materials to be used for that particular activity so so walang structure yung kung ilan ba yung activity basta yon sa sa Kilgore method you have uh, the activity objective expected uh, student behavior plan teachers behavior and the materials and then of course you have the references okay since this is the manual for uh, teaching literature by Penn International making use of Kilgore uh, Kilgore method by the La Salle University Ito naman obras maestras. If you have a manual for Philippine pen for the Philippine literature, that's uh, inclusive no, for the entire Philippines in sa pen. Ito naman kay uh, Pas Dud Santos at kay Ma'am Marifa uh, Prado, obras maestras. This one is a manual for Bicol literature. More, ano siya, more inclusive for Bicol literature. Kaya huwag sasabihin no, walang uh, walang references yung mga literature teachers like teaching Bicol literature kasi meron naman kahit konti but the invitation of course to also make our own diba? that's always the challenge but at least you have reference so you have Philippine pen you have obras maestra for obras maestras yung design niya iba-iba hindi lang sila nag-follow sa Kilgore method kundi uh, kung titignan yung libro eto yung synthesis of the parts no so you have objectives they have the first uh, part is the objective and notes are actually yung parang key concept uh, to understand the topic uh, from Kilgore method akala tawag nila notes and then following the traditional plan uh, in the philippines now when you when you handle culture culture based instruction or literature literature uh, lessons you follow the traditional way of doing it dividing dividing the instruction into three the pre-reading during reading and post reading so pre-reading is an activity prior to the reading uh, reading uh, during reading is an activity you know to highlight things uh, students learn uh, while reading and post reading it should not be an activity to end Diba? the discussion we always stress that eh? but it's an invitation to to open discussions after you know learning uh, things insights about uh, a certain cultural or literary work so a post reading post reading is not an ending but uh but an invitation for for a travel an invitation to go further uh, others may call it branching Okay, branching frame because you branch from this after learning you have to learn further no, it's not an end actually and then you uh obras maestras would also end with references always no always naman yung mga framework natin would end with references kasi again respeto ito sa mga nauna sa atin we do not know get ideas of other people we only borrow them and we try to benefit from things that uh, were that were contributed by people before us okay and then we have lipwas yung sa lipwas naman it's the uh reference for the 21st century literature this is the newer no oh, again still by dude santos past verdada santos she, she is a retired professor of the lasa university and at another university while mama rifa parado is still a professor of the Ateneo university okay so what's the what's the parts of, of lipwas no so lipwas 
uh, make use of these terms to refer to parts. The first one is lesson entry. It's actually a one question, one liner question to begin, you know, to begin the lesson plan. So, so one question related to the theme of the literary piece. And then a starter, it's a, a little bit of introduction. So they, 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 uh, or notes or the concept of understanding by pe uh, from pen. No? So, dito naman sa lipwa, lipwas, ang tawag na last starter. It's a short discussion or a paragraph this, uh, parang describing uh, to students or teachers what to expect uh, as part of the body of the discussion. And then number three, of course, for direction, they have object we have objective, the learning objective. Okay? So, and then followed by notes, some more importance on the life of the author or some context of parang cultural background or historical background or of, of the topic. And then you have the literary engagement. It's the reading, reading activity, it's the during activity for the traditional way of writing the plan. And then guide questions. Okay, so essential questions are there. And then sa kanila, grabe, uh, mas, mas detalyado ito, may mga worksheets pa sila, individual worksheets uh, for highlighting some uh, some parts of, of the lesson. And then may reflection pa sila for valuing. And then parallel text, what I like about uh, Lipwas is that they have parallel text. Parallel text is what we also celebrate for wondering words, wondering words. Instead of like uh, discussing a text as a vacuum or as an individual text, we're looking at a text as a sample of a group of texts or as this more of a structural, structural following structuralism. No, so a particular literary piece is actually uh, just a sample of a of a group of literary piece that follows the same design. So, itong lipwas, kapag may tula siya, na pinidiscuss, maghahanap yung, maghahanap yung teacher na nagsulat ng lipwas ng mga parallel text, ng mga the same text na having the same style of, of the text being uh, learned in a particular chapter. And then there's an extension. Extension is the ending. See how playful the words are? Not any more ending, but uh, uh, extension. No, not not any more post reading. Mas maganda extension. Akin naman I call it boraging. Para again, it's not an end. It should not be an end. An activity not to end the discussion, not ending of the of the appreciation appreciating a cultural item, but an invitation to go to a travel for further learning. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. And then Himati. Himati is uh, designed by Savage Mind. Uh, this is the work of uh, Christian Cordero and Tito Valiente. No? So, so, during the pandemic, walang magawa yung mga artists. Ang ginawa ni na Tito at ni Cordero was to invite artists like uh, si Echundi, tapos siya on dyan si uh, si Elani. Si, basta mga kilalang, uh, si Prada, Prado ba yun? Si Prado from Bicol, at mga, si, ano, kada, kadakulo ng mga artist ang pick invite to read a poem. Tapos may video sila, and then my artwork, my painting on a, on a, a short video clip. Tapos nagsikat siya during the pandemia. So, and then, and then, later on, they decided to produce a book as a con complementary to the video. So now, uh, the text now becomes alive because it was produced in a video where a popular icon is reading uh, uh, in the hope of like the public will be, you know, um, be inspired to read the text. Mga Bicol, hindi lang, hindi lang pati ito Bicol text, ano, may mga foreign text and mga uh, Philippine uh, text there. And then, ginawa nila ng, uh, ng manual on how to uh, integrate this video into the class, into your own classroom. So, yung design nila, mas simple kasi nga more, ano ito, more on the video. Uh, parang the, the, the book is a complementary on how to introduce the video of uh, poetry reading to the classroom. So, you have there the video. 
and then the printed copy of the poem and the notes no so it's a backgrounder in terms of context and in terms of the production in terms of the the highlights of of the poem and and or of the paintings or art work that is in, included in the video and then there's a guide question for students and teachers okay yeah so those are those are our Ayan, and uh, lastly, may ginawa din yung mga cultural workers natin na libro for the for the Bicol River. Kasi Bicol River is on a state where, where, where it's not, it's dying, no? So if we're not doing anything now, it will soon die. So yung Bicol River. So they come up with a very good book to introduce the love, uh, parang, the the advocacy to take good care of the Bicol River, who's dying, no? From preparatory to grade twelve. Ito yung kagandahan dito. Yung Bicol Bicol River as a as a topic, uh, and then they brought the idea, the advocacy, from one grade level to the next. Ito ang maganda dito, no? From preschool to the grade twelve, actually, from from, uh, from junior to to from K to junior to senior high school. Pero ito yung design nila, may introduction. So the discussion of Beagle River from kindergarten to grade 12. So my introduction sila, my concept or the text or notes. Laging may ganun, di ba? And then my objectives and then question and then reference. So yun. Ngayon, we'll have a workshop. Okay. So ayaw ko kasi ng ano, ng uh, thank you. So that's my slide. So we go back first, man. Right. Ngayon po magbo workshop na po tayo. Okay, so, so we will ha we will group ourselves. How many are we? Aha, uh -huh, we are. We are ninety one. Wow. We're ninety one. Yes, sir. <laughs> I thought we're like 15 or 30. We're 91. Pala, oh my God. Uh, where did you get these people? Okay, so we are 91. Um, uh, so how do we divide ourselves? Ang papagawin ko sa inyo ay this one. Ito yung pinapagawa ko talaga sa, ano, kasi I'm also the research, one of the research instructor in the campus. What I ask my students, it's like the, uh, the one did by... Uh, professor, uh, professor from UP Dalaman, na anthropo, uh, mga anthropologists and archaeologists, they ask their students to go back to their provinces and collect, uh, collect um, cultural, cultural treasures and, uh, and record them. No, but we will not only record because uh, this is cult, uh, culture based instruction. So, parang ang gagawin natin is for you to come up with a lesson in your own discipline, uh, integrating a cultural treasure from your barangay, if there is, or from your town. Ganun siguro. From Sipokot. No? Yan. Yan ang challenge natin for the workshop. So, ano sir ang gagawin natin? Ano? Format. Okay. Ang gagawin natin format. Sige. Uh, gagawa si Hipolito ng sarili niyang format. Kasi, again, uh, anong, ano ang realization natin? from the from the discussion natin, that there is no one best way to teach culture or language or math or science what we're trying to do here is innovating no? so we're not deleting any but we're adding something else what what is being added here added value is culture we wanted that our instruction instruction will be addressing the local culture lo local uh, local treasures of our learners so that the learners will, you know, in a way, have a connection uh, to your topic, diba? Uh, that's, our, that's our way of, you know, connecting to our learners. And so therefore, furthermore, I would claim that there is no really good, correct, uh, singular uh, framework to teach, be it uh, culture-based instruction or 
literature based instruction so there's no best way to do it but we're uh, we're only identifying the non-negotiable uh, parts of the instruction so your lesson plan or your framework should uh, the Jerome uh, way or the Jerome Hippolitalian method should be uh, there should be a, a short introduction then there should be learning objectives and then notes on the background of the uh, of the of the cultural icon or the writer or a writer and then you should have uh, a beginning activity beginning frame so you can call it beginning frame and then the discussion proper and then the branching frame no? so not ending but branching so for the branching i'm i'm visualizing it as a as an activity for multiple intelligences so branching because i wanted it that, that this becomes a topic but there should be a way 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 to end the topic is to branch it out no so we have to satisfy the multiple intelligences of the students. So it has to be um, differentiated learning. So the branching and the preferences. So those only five mo most important non-negotiable part of uh, culture-based instruction. So again, there should be an introduction, objectives, uh, beginning frame. I do not want to call it start, starter. And then discussion. Okay, I, I want to call it learning experiences and then the branching and then references. Okay, so, right, right. so how do we do this? Uh, uh, where is Mom? Uh, Mom, Miss Lopez, how do we, uh, how do we ask them to, because I wanted Sana to hear a sample. May time pa ba tayo? Hello? Yes, sir. We still have time for right, so, the workshop. Uh, for the workshop, ano. So, uh, if you like to work alone, uh, do it alone. If you want to group yourself with friends or with colleagues, then please group yourselves among yourself. Um, group group yourself and then I'll be asking for a vo well, at least one volunteer and I'll try to you know give my comments afterwards no I'm giving you around how many minutes do you need how many minutes do you need it's 10 20 so I'm giving you until 11 30 11 15. Can you do that? Uh, 11 15. Limang parts lang naman, and some parts are very much easy. No, if you like to, um, you first, the first uh, question is what subject and then what topic. Make it the simplest subject. Uh, pag choosing of the subject, dapat itong pwedeng integrate uh, ning, ning, ano, ning, ning culture. Diba? Kada ko man na topics na pwedeng kahit anong subject yan, pwedeng integrate uh, ning culture. And then, and then the parts, uh, we've enumerated the parts, the non-negotiable. And then you press, so you have your presentation. So can we have a, can we have the presentation by 11.15? Hello? Is it a deal? Hello? Hello. Sir, some yes. are asking about the instructions and some are requesting if you can repeat the instructions so they can do the task. Uh, the task is to um, choose one subject and one topic only. It's a, it's a, it should be it should be a lesson plan, uh, not so detailed lesson plan a plan to discuss a particular topic in your own field but integrating culture right because that's my topic integrating your own culture in Sipokot or wherever you are you integrate your own your own culture into a topic let's say for example science teacher ka so you integrate one one 
in teaching one topic, you integrate a local culture, a local indigenous knowledge into your subject. Okay? Following the following the format, the non-negotiable parts we have identified. Okay? So it could be individual or it could be a group work. Clear na ba? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, we're clear. Ano po yun? Hello? The instructions were clear po. Yeah, okay. Sige. Um, uh, of course, they're preparing now. So we're, we will be waiting for them uh, until 11.15. And then someone, um, Ma'am uh, ma Lopez, no? Some, uh, please encourage someone to present and then I'll give comments. And then from there we end. Mm -hmm.